Hello everyone, welcome back to the TechLoud channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about TCP header. So in this video, we will discuss about the header segments. We will discuss about each segment bits and byte size. Then each segment importance, we will see what are the importance of every segment in the TCP header. Then we will see the maximum segment lifetime, what is maximum segment li lifetime and what is the use of this MSL. Then we will also see the MSS and the MTU, MSS maximum segment size and MTU maximum transmission units. What is the use of MSS and MTU? What is the difference between MSS and MTU? We will see in this video. Then after we will see PMTUD that is path MTU discovery. So we will see about this in the detail as well. Then after we have TCP retransmission and in the last we will understand a TCP header inside a Wireshark tool. We will see how does the TCP header looks like in a Wireshark tool and try to understand that. Now let's see uh, a TCP header. So this is a format of TCP header. So you can simply say a TCP header is complete a size of 32 bits. It is from 0 to 32 bits as a size. All the head segment in the header will be lie between this 0 to 32 bits. So you can see the source port at first so the source port is for 2 byte then after the destination port this one is also for 2 bytes then sequence number acknowledgement number data offset reserve bit then control flags windows or window size you can say checksum or you can also say flow control urgent pointer you can also say urgent and data and option flag so this is the same thing data or option this one is the last one segment in the tcp header now let's understand each segment one by one so the first segment we are going to discuss that is source port as we know source port means this will tell us about a source port of the sender means we have a PC let's call it he is a sender so this sender will called as also source and whatever the port like anything port 22 port 443 port 80 or any unidentified port like 16521 so any port that is being used by this source computer that will be called as source port in the TCP header the source port is 16 bit segment it is a 16 bit segment that tell us about the source port in the header next we have destination port so destination port is the same thing it tell us about the destination port which is used in the traffic let's say for the sender has used a port for the destination that could be anything in between 80 anything that you can say also in between 0 to 6 5 5 3 5 that is the range of port it is all range of port including ex, uh, unknown and known port well known ports so now this destination port let us know about what is the port being used for the destination this destination port segment is also a 16 bit segment 16 bits segment it just tell us about the destination port now let's see the next one so the next one we have sequence number this one is a very important segment inside the tcp header so it is first one it is a 32 bit segment it is a 32 bit segment it indicate how much data is sent during tcp session this indicate how much data send during tcp session okay so during tcp handshake initial sequence number sent by the center so the sender sender sends first or you can say 
or you can say initial sequence number now receiver uses this sequence number to send back the acknowledgement to the sender so the other important aspect of sequence number is receiver uses the sequence number to reply on acknowledgement about the sequence number we will see in the detail in the next slide we have something more to discuss now let's see the next segment so the next segment is acknowledgement number so this one is also another important segment in the tcp header this one is also a 32 bit segment as like sequence number acknowledgement number is also 32 bit segment in the tcp header it is used by receiver generally this acknowledgement number is used by receiver to request the next tcp segment means here we have a let's call it sender and we have a receiver so what happened sender has sent a scene packet and on behalf of scene packet receiver has acknowledged so once this thing done then after receiver was says that whatever you want to tell me you can tell me now means they have the tcp connection now so they can exchange the data they can discuss about the data so this is why acknowledgement number is being used by the receiver to tell about sharing the next tcp segment also so an acknowledgement number is calculated with it will be just sequence number plus one let's say this sender has sent sequence and the sequence number is sequence number is one so what will be the acknowledgement number one plus one this will be the acknowledgement number sent by receiver this is how the acknowledgement number calculated now let's see the next data offset data offset is another important aspect in the tcp header what it do let's first see the size of it so this data field size is 4 bit this one is a 4 bit field or segment you can say so we also call it header length data offset is also sometimes called as header length data offset actually indicate about the length of tcp header this data offset tells us about the length of tcp header tcp header so particularly this indicate where the actual data begins the main work the main importance of data offset is that it indicate us it indicate the user or it indicate the in the traffic that from where the actual traffic started traffic begin this is all about data offset let's see the next next we have the reserved field the reserved segment so this reserved segment is nothing but a reserve space a reserved bits for the future reference so this one is only for three bits it has only three bits in the segment uh, this is only use or you can say reserve for future nothing that's it and whenever you will see a packet or tcp header so you will see reserve as zero the value of reserve bit will be always reserve segment will be set as zero 
to state that it is not used and it is reserved only set as 0 to notify the reservation you can say now let's see the next one next we have flag so for flags we have already uploaded a video on the channel you can just go and watch link will be in the description now let's see the next one window size so window size is also a 16 bit segment window size you might have found little bit confusing because what is the role of window size is not completely defined so the role of window size is window size segment specify that how many bytes receiver can receive this tells us about the receiver he is the receiver so this tell us about the capability of receiver that how much bytes receiver can receive simply it is specified also this window size is specified in the acknowledgement field by the receiver whenever the receiver send back a reply to the sender so in the acknowledgement packet you will see the window size in the acknowledgement from receiver define window size means the receiver says to the sender that I can accept only 1 MB or 2 MB or 10 MB of data that kind of thing now let's see the next one next we have checksum checksum is also called as flow control you can say so this checksum is also a 16 bits segment so checksum generally do error checking work and for the checksum we have also created a video so if you want to know more about checksum you can just watch this video the description will be in the link let's see the next one urgent pointer so in the flag video we have discussed about flags so whenever we use first let me note it down it is also a 16 bit the first thing it is a 16 bits segment so urgent pointer is used when a data send with urgent flag in the flag segment if there is a like this urg urge means urgent urgent flag if there is a urgent flag in the packet in that case in that case it will use urgent pointer means the urgent pointer segment will be on or set to on you can say then this will be set to on or like this one <clears throat> that particular so actually this particularly indicate where the urgent data end and need to process as soon as possible we have a sender and we have a receiver so what happened when a packet sent getting sent to the destination some of the packet getting sent and this packet need to be processed some other packet need to be processed immediately so this packet will be used as used with urgent flag and without waiting in the queue this packet will directly send to the destination and to indicate this the traffic the packet will set on the urgent pointer only 
okay so this is the work of urgent pointer in the tcp field in the tcp header now let's see the other option option or you can say data field in this field you will see or the user or in the traffic you will see the original data the actual data reside in the optional field or data field so first thing it could be it could be between 0 to 32 bit first so you can call it it is a 0 to 32 bit segment it is the end segment of tcp header that's why the bit value can be different because this carry out the data this carry out the traffic data so this is why it could be between 0 to 32 bit it is not defined that it will be only 16 or 18 or 20 it could be anything between 0 to 32 and the most important option field carry out that is it's three kinds of data it three kinds of work it do basically so it do the first thing that is called as option kind or you can say option type means what kind of data or what type of data second length option length this tells us about length of data third third we have data octet option data octet means what is the size of octet size of octet in the option segment this is also defined by or defined in the data octet so this is all about option so inside the option field there is some other more important aspect that we are going to discuss and if you are going to give the interview in interview some of the interview they will ask you the packet label questions in the packet level questions they mostly ask about MSS so MSS first of all belongs to option segment the first thing the first answer you can say the maximum segment size so this maximum segment size is state about the largest amount of data that is specified in the bytes whatever the data we are sending so those data data that is defined in the bytes state by MSS MSS is maximum segment size so this MSS field the MSS should be a smaller why is it should be a smaller because MSS is MSS need to be smaller to avoid IP fragmentation IP fragmentation where our big size data breaks into smaller pieces to pass through the traffic or pass through the interface also this MSS is the default value of MSS is 536 536 536 you can say default value of our MSS and to calculate the MSS we need some of the information like so if we say MSS is 
इक्वल टू एम टी यू माइनस आई पी हेडर वेन एवर समन आस्क यू दैट वॉट इज एम एस एस अगेंस्ट एम टी यू सो एम एस एस इज बिगर मीन्स एम एस एस इज इक्वल टू एम टी यू माइनस आई पी हैडर और इन सम केसेस आई पी सेक हैडर इफ इट इज सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट एम एस एस एम एस एस बिलोंग्स टू द ऑप्शन फील्ड एंड इट इज बिंग यूज टू डिफाइन द स्टेट ऑफ द डेटा इन द बाइट्स इट इज कॉल्ड एज एम एस एस मैक्सिमम सेगमेंट साइज दिस नीड टू बी बी ए स्मॉल टू अवॉइड द आई पी फ्रेगमेंटेशन मीन्स आर डेटा शुड नॉट बी फ्रेगमेंटेड और ब्रेक इन द स्मॉलर पीसेज टू पास थ्रू द ट्रैफिक और टू पास थ्रू द इंटरफेस डिफॉल्ट साइज इज फाइव थर्टी सिक्स बिट एंड दिस इज हाउ द एम एस एज इज कैलकुलेटेड एम एस एज इज इक्वल टू एम टी यू माइनस आई पी हेडर आफ्टर एम एस एज वी नीड टू डिस्कस अबाउट दैट इज पी एम टी यू डी we also need to discuss pm t u d pm t u d means path mtu mtu means maximum transmission unit discovery let me tell you with the scenario so i have this kind of connection i have this kind of setup so this one is pc1 pc2 and pc3 so now this pc1 has two path to reach to the pc2 one is direct and one is via pc3 so what can happen with the path mtu discovery it can identify that which path is easiest to reach to the destination so this path monitoring discovery is used to determine the best path the best mtu for the traffic to avoid the ip fragmentation so let's say it has the mtu of 1500 and it has mtu of 1000 so if it is sending the packet toward this so our packet could be fragmented if you we use this mtu or this path then in that case our packet will not be fragmented so this is how the path monitoring disc the the path mtu discovery define and determine about the path for the sender this a path mtu discovery uses icmp protocol to determine the best path for the traffic now we must discuss about mtu because we get to know path monitoring but we need to know mtu so like path monitoring mtu is maximum transmission unit means this tell us about how much data can be passed through or can be passed through a interface maximum transmission unit the default value of mtu is default value is 1500 so mtu a state about how much a throughput or a data can pass through a device interface we have a device this one is its let's call it nic or interface so this mtu maximum transmission unit defines that how much data this interface can handle or this interface can through throughput of the interface this is the basic of mtu after mtu the another important aspect we need to discuss that is the part of sequence number that is msl msl is maximum segment lifetime
maximum segment lifetime so msl state about the longest time in seconds it state about longest time in seconds the M msl is calculated in seconds only so this tell us about the longest time in second of a tcp segment that can be available in the network the packet which is being sent from the sender to the receiver so for how much time the packet will be available in the network that is being defined by the msl the default msl value is default value is in seconds so that is 60 seconds so let's see some of the use case of msl what is the use of msl and why it is important in the sequence number why it is important in the entry replay as well so what happened let's say we have a pc let me remove we have a pc pc1 here we have pc2 pc1 has sent something to the no let's say it directly pc has sent something to the pc2 pc1 sent something to the pc2 so what happened in any case or by the any circumstances the traffic got broke or you can say the traffic got dropped out so after the traffic will be dropped out pc1 will wait till its msl then it reinitiate the traffic what it do it will wait it will wait for 60 second to reinitiate the traffic again so this one is the first use case of msl now how this is important with sequence number so this msl avoid to be duplicate sequence number so let's say another case we have a pc and this one is pc2 again pc1 and pc2 and again the same way the traffic got break or drop traffic is dropped by the any reason now the pc1 again retransmit the data with the same sequence number means the first sequence number it send that could be anything let's call it one the first sequence number is one and the traffic got dropped because of any reason now the traffic will be reinitiated and it will again send the sequence number with one so what will happen in this case so if the sender if the pc1 send the traffic again or retransmit the data again with the same sequence number that breach the accountability of the sequence number in tcp segment how it, it is breaching because tcp does not retransmit the same sequence number or you can say the duplicate sequence number as the retransmit packet will be count as duplicate so because of this the second packet will be count as duplicate and drop by the receiver again drop by the receiver again so now in that case this pc1 anyhow have to send a new sequence number like anything two three four anything so this pc1 have to send any new sequence number to connect with the receiver or to connect with the pc1 pc2 sorry so this is how it avoid the duplicate connection sequence number there could not be any duplicate sequence number also this mechanism you can see in the ipsec vpn that is called as anti replay anti replay also do the same thing it does not retransmit or does not process the same sequence number data again or same sequence number session again duplicate session it does not process the duplicate session in simple words so this is all about the tcp header 
now we are going to see a actual image of tcp header so in this page you can see there is the actual image of tcp header and you just need to focus on the red boxes in the red boxes you will see the source port that is 41417 now you will see the destination port and the destination port is 23 then after so this one is first of all understand this one is a scene packet so in the scene packet you will not see some of the things like that so let's see the sequence numbers see it is it does not have sequence number because it is a scene packet it is set to zero if there is if the packet is not scene packet any other packet then it will have a sequence number acknowledgement number is also zero because it is a scene packet header length is 24 byte means the data offset is 24 bytes now you can see there is a flag set so in reserve set that is set to zero reserve is zero nonce about the flags we have discussed this one is non flag it is also not set congestion window cwr flag is not set also eco flag flag is not set also all of them are zero urgent technology post reset everything is zero except this sin because this is a sin packet that's why the value of sin is 1 means it is set to on now you can see window size value 4128 means this is the size that receiver can receiver can receive means the capability of receiver next one is checksum you can see the checksum so it is the validation is disabled why it is disabled because it is a sin packet it does not has process any checksum in between it does not have process any hopes so that's why it is saying good and bad checksum as false next one is urgent pointer so as we discuss if the packet is not a urgent packet in that case the urgent pointer will be set to zero if the packet is set to urgent or with the urgent flag in that case only the urgent pointer will be set to 1 in the option field you can see we just now discuss mss belong to option field the maximum segment size we also discuss the mtu and mtu default value that is 1500 so you can see over here mss is here you can see mss is 41460 1460 means this mss is and if you minus it means the 40 is the ip header so this is the actual image of a tcp header you can see this image or you can see this header in the wiresack if you have the wiresack you can just capture the traffic and see this kinds of detail over there so this is all about tcp header thank you for watching if you like the video please do comment subscribe and share with everyone if you have any comment or any query just comment and let us know thank you for watching